She gave up at least 12 and probably 14 or 15 different policies. Like, she was big on defund the police. In Minnesota, she went out. Wait a minute. I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? I'm speaking. You can't talk over me. But he's not a woman of color, so it's okay. I know I read that in the Associated Press Style Guide. It's okay. White man. I am thinking we're going to have to take away electricity. We might have to just pull the plug on that whole electricity thing. Well, happy Wednesday to you. As Bill Clinton says when he wakes up, happy hump day, happy hump day. Hillary must be out of the house lickety split. Because for Bill Clinton, it's not just Wednesday. It's hump day. And that means it's mailbag day here on the uh, Chris Plant Show. And I have right in my hand right here, I have a sheet printed out using paper made from trees and ink. Made from petroleum, Uh, Democrats would have no paper and uh, no ink because, you know, they're saving the world. They're making it better uh, by going pre-Columbian, primitive, the the Democrat Party. Well, uh, good morning to you and and welcome back. Uh, I'm guessing most of you probably watched the debate or at least most of the debate uh, last night. It uh, ran a little bit late, you might say. My best girl and I, we were up watching it uh, very intently and... And it was uh, something. It was something. Uh, President Trump, I think, had a number of problems. One is he didn't prepare. He didn't prepare anything in the way of responses. And and it went on for longer. It was supposed to be a 90-minute debate. And what it went on for an hour and 15 or an hour 20, excuse me, an hour 45 or an hour 50, rather than just 90 minutes, rather than an hour and a half. And uh, David Muir is going to get an award from the Democratic Party for his performance last night. And that woman, who's that woman there? I never heard of her. Never heard of her once. But she jumped in just to get stuff wrong and to lie because, you know, this is how you get awards in media land. They'll probably get Emmys for their performance last night and presumably Lucite blocks from the Democrat Party to express their appreciation for the role that they played in uh, working to get the Democrat nominee elected to the presidency of the United States. Yeah, uh, ABC News was just a a house of ill repute last night. I don't want to use any harsh harsh language, you know, like Ho House or anything like that. But uh, pretty amazing stuff, pretty appalling. And uh, David Muir, the most awful. I was telling you yesterday that uh, the Media Research Center, the great Brent Bozell and the wonderful Media Research Center, they do news busters and great stuff. But they put together an analysis of ABC News media coverage since Kamala Harris was anointed or coronated or whatever it is in the most undemocratic selection process in the history of the United States of America, at least since the Democrats, you know, uh, uh, chose Jefferson Davis to be their president, the president of the Confederate States of America. You know, the CSA, uh, you might find their belt buckles at old stores. But uh, but never mind that. Remarkable stuff. Uh, the uh, uh, David Muir, ABC News, and uh, that woman who nobody nobody knows uh, and nobody really cares. She'll probably never do anything again. But they can expect uh, golden statuettes and lucite blocks for their performance last night. And when I say performance, I mean it was an act of journalistic gratification that they performed upon Kamala Harris and on the Democrat Party. They're going to need some chapstick. We should send Michael. Can we uh, can we courier over some chapstick the to the ABC News headquarters? I think that'd be very polite of us, because and maybe something for their chafed knees. But the the uh, the performance of the fake news media last night really breathtaking. Something to see. Um, great stuff. And again, we open with the soundbite. President Trump. I'm talking now. Sound familiar? Uh, mocking her a little bit of a mock. I got to say, I had multiple text threads going during the, the course of the, uh, of the debate last night, as I'm sure you did. And, and when it opened, I, I texted a couple of different text threads. 
Uh, look at Trump. He's focused. He's He's got his game face on. Uh, he's calm, cool, and collected. That didn't last very long, however, because although we knew that the game plan for the Democrats and Kamala was to go in and to goad him, to goad him, to uh, 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 try to get him riled up so he'd lose his temper. Uh, we went in knowing that. We went in knowing that uh, ABC News is the most corrupt, the most corrupt of the network news broadcast, certainly. And again, Media Research Center yesterday, I shared the study with you. Since uh, Kamala was coronated, 100% of the news coverage of Kamala Harris at ABC News was positive. Every single mention, positive. And when it comes to President Trump, 93% of mentions and 93% of coverage, negative. Negative when it comes to President Trump. 100% fluffomatic when it comes to Kamala Harris. And uh, so you go in knowing that this is the enemy camp, ABC News, when you're a Republican, because they are there to do you in. And David Muir and that uh, nameless woman, they, they, uh, they did everything they could for the Democrat Party. They will get golden statuettes and lucite blocks for their efforts. And uh, I don't know if they can pay David Muir any more than they're paying him now. But, uh, and that woman, they're probably racist and sexist and don't pay her $25 million a year, but, but never mind that. They, uh, they will show their appreciation in one way or another. So the big debate last night, and, and I got to say, um, it was not, President Trump says that, that it was his best debate ever. Uh, that's not true. And, uh, and he says that all the polls are showing that he won the debate, and that's not quite true either. But we'll get into, uh, we'll get into some of that. You know, it's political rhetoric a lot of the time. And uh, President Trump, had, he had a couple of moments last night. They came somewhat late. Uh, but the news media really drove the train on this. And Kamala was better than she's ever been. She was less cackly, less insane. She uh, played to the cameras. And, uh, you know, she was staring at the cameras the whole time. There's no audience, uh, which would probably help President Trump to play off the audience. Although uh, last time, it, you know, when uh, President Trump debated Joe Biden, and it went so poorly for Joe Biden that he had to, for the first time in history, drop out of the race as the sitting president and the candidate. He had to get out of the race because he did, largely because he did so poorly in the last presidential debate, the debate against President Trump. And there are still people saying, oh, this is the first presidential debate. No, well, the first presidential debate was when the Democrats had a different candidate, you know, after the primaries, when more than 14 million Democrats voted for Joe Biden, and then uh, they kicked him to the curb. They, you know, dropped him off a cliff. Where is he now, anyway? Uh, and, uh, and actually, uh, since I mentioned that out loud, today is also the 23rd anniversary of the uh, savage, radical Islamic attacks on the United States, on New York City, the World Trade Center, the, the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, uh, 23 years ago today and uh, launching the longest war in American history. And uh, by the way, just a little reminder, the same savages uh, murdered all those Israelis on October 7th of uh, last year, and the anniversary, the one-year anniversary of that is coming up, and Democrats across the country have plans to celebrate the massacre on college campuses and beyond because the Democrat Party is now, they've evolved and now they're on the side of radical Islam. It's the only religious freedom that they support, the uh, freedom of radical Islam to massacre people around the world, in particular in the United States, because the Democrat Party is not on our side, not on our side at all. So remarkable stuff. And uh, ABC's Lindsey Davis fact-checks Trump abortion claims, and she lied about that. She lied. These are dumb people. And uh, not very bright people. And I I point this out all the time because it's true. They don't follow the news. They really don't know what's in the news. They, you ask them some of the most basic facts about bloodbath or good people on both sides, uh, both of which came up last night at the debate because Kamala and because David Muir and Lindsey Davis, the ABC handmaidens, are they like handmaid's tale? Is Is that what it is? They're handmaid's or handmaidens to the Democrat Party, 
uh, but she fact checks Trump on abortion and the left wing. They're all over it. See, yeah, uh, but the problem is that they're lying. They're wrong. Uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. President Trump brought up the uh, the fun story that we talked about here yesterday about Haitians, Haiti, uh, where Barbecue is one of the head cannibal gang leaders. And these Haitians, the uh, Biden administration sent maybe 20,000 Haitians to a uh, town of 60,000, a small city of 60,000 in Ohio. And there are reports all over the place that the Haitians are eating house pets and ducks and geese out of the pond in the city park, and the news media is pretending that it's not happening, and they don't follow the news. Yesterday, I played audio from a city council meeting where residents of Springfield, Ohio, were describing what they had witnessed, and the news media pretends it's not happening because they live in a bizarro little land, uh, maybe of you know fentanyl or whatever, whatever drugs they're doing, uh, but uh, to keep their brains from functioning properly. But we got remarkable stuff, and they became very angry about that, too. We called the city manager of Springfield, Ohio, and he told us there is no specific evidence of uh, actual Haitians eating actual house pets and uh, left out the ducks and the geese and and so on. Uh, And they're doing everything they can, the corrupt, filthy Democrat Party front group media, to shoot down that story, and I, I, I guess that's because they think it makes the Democrats look bad since they are the open borders, uh, let's invite gangs of Haitian cannibals into the United States and see what happens. You know, we'll just, we'll uh, wait and find out what happens. Uh, remarkable stuff. And the um, uh, the Democrats, they really love abortion. God, they love abortion. And they lie about it all the time, too. Now, the uh, question, can you... Get an abortion right up to the moment of birth in Democrat land. And that was shot down brusquely last night by the Democrats. And that means ABC News and uh, Kamala. The only problem is they're lying. They're lying uh, sacks of Jewea. Uh, Kamala's a lying sack of Jewea. David Muir is a lying sack of Jewea. And Lindsey Davis, a lying sack of Jewea. We got three sack of Jewea's there. That's uh, pretty remarkable stuff. Uh, so we got that. And I'll share that with you coming up as well. Mm-mm-mm. Amazing. Mary Margaret Olihan. Trump was inches from being assassinated. No questions on the attempt tonight, nor the politically charged rhetoric that brought us here. Yeah, that, that's when you're a Democrat. You see, hey, President Trump, you were shot uh, in the head through your ear by a sniper, a would-be assassin, and had you not turned your head to the right at the last moment, They would have killed you, and it would be the Zabruder film all over again. And uh, the Democrat rhetoric demonizing you as Hitler and the end of democracy and the end of the world as we know it. They're always apocalyptic about everything, aren't they, the left? That's because they have plans to destroy the world and kill everyone. I I think the left, and the left has the Democrat Party now and the news media. It's remarkable stuff. It truly is. Uh, And Mary Margaret Olihan continues, he was, however, asked why he's racist for thinking Kamala wasn't black. See, because that's the news media that we have. Now, uh, again, President Trump went into this knowing that, uh, should have gone into this knowing that, and uh, should have been calm, cool, collected, focused, should have had um, talking points at the ready, and zingers should have had his funny lines that would... That would uh, be heard around the world. And uh, that whole thing didn't go very well. President Trump is talking about, but that's okay. I mean, honestly, uh, because the way news cycles are in the United States, in about 48 hours, this whole debate thing will have been effectively forgotten and we will have moved on. And the C-SPAN put together a poll. And on the C-SPAN online poll, at least last night, They had 41,565 votes, and 67.2% said Donald Trump won the debate. Only 32.8% said Kamala Harris won the debate. I, um, I, it was uh, Kamala's bright and shining moment. She was at her best. President Trump was not prepared. Kamala was very well prepared. 
It was theatrical, and she had the... It was three-on-one, there's no doubt about that. Three-on-one, and the media is more excited today because Taylor Swift waited until the debate was over to see how she did, and then endorsed Kamala Harris. She's got a lot of followers on social media, and that's supposed to be important in this screwed-up world that we're in, this screwed-up political world. Amazing stuff. And Hillary Clinton weighed in and gave her advice to Kamala Harris before the debate. It's surprising she didn't throw an ashtray at his head. That's usually the advice that Hillary Clinton gives. And we are at 888-630-9625. Just a few of the things coming up today. All right, a um, a great many audio sound bites from last night to share with you today, along with uh, September 11th, the September 11th anniversary. And uh, anybody remember the name Jamie Gorelick? Jamie Gorelick from the Bill Clinton Justice Department, were it not for her bureaucratic decisions and leadership, uh, September 11th probably never would have happened we would have found out about the hijackers and prevented it from happening, and we wouldn't have had the war um, in Afghanistan leading to the war in Iraq and the global war on terror. But never mind that. I'll get into, I'll get into that in a little bit. Jamie Gorelick, she, uh, I don't know how she sleeps at night. Let's go to the uh, telephones. Let's go to Robert calling from the great state of Maryland. Robert, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Good morning, Chris. Hey, Robert. Have you ever seen a more arrogant person just stand there in front of the country and lie through her teeth? I mean, she just lied. I mean, basically, Chris, I watched this whole thing. She had the script for months. This is script. She read the script. Her answers were scripted. I mean, and there's no doubt about this stuff, but to get up there and be that arrogant and lie through her teeth, I mean, she is the one that met with the, uh, the prime was the guy, the Medvedev of Russia, to have this a meeting prior to them invading Ukraine. Trump was right on this. He was right about that. Trump was right about her saying that she hated Israel. I mean, she said she wanted to put an arms embargo on Israel. You have tape of her saying that she wanted to take our frigging guns. I mean, but to stand there, that goes to show you, in my opinion, what she thinks and the media of the American people. They got to think we are the biggest bunch of suckers ever to walk the face of the earth. But lies, Chris, she had the script. This was scripted, brother. There is no doubt about it. And the uh, the news media, as I like to say, the most corrupt institution in America. And as Brent Bozell and the Media Research Center point out, ABC is the worst. Uh, the Washington Times headline today, front page. A near banner headline, Harris attacks Trump as weak. Yeah, he's the weak one. That's why they always call him a strong man and compare him to the strong man of the 20th century. Remains vague on policy. Policy? What policy? They did uh, post a little thing on their website, but she doesn't have to talk policy. She's got David Muir and that that woman there who are uh, fluffing her as a verb. Remarkable times we're in. Lindsay Davis. They're going to get awards. They are. All right, let's let's uh, let's take another phone call before I start getting the audio from last night, of which there is a great deal, as you might imagine, and uh, September 11th and the role that the Democrat Party played, the Clinton Justice Department, in um, allowing the attacks of September 11th to take place 23 years ago, leading to uh, all kinds of bad things. Now let's go to uh, let's go to the telephones. Let's go to Bob calling from Ashburn, Virginia. Oh, Bob, you're on the Chris Plant show. Chris, how are you this morning? I'm great, Bob. What do you say? First of all, I wanted to uh, honor all the vet- veterans, police officers, and firefighters who passed away. This nine uh, eleven, yeah, twenty three yes, years ago today. Yes, sir, I remember it well. The other thing is, as an a investigator, I, I have some real issues with Kamala Harris and the, and the corruption that I observed just on... Have, have you ever heard the expression Kinesic interviewing? 
It's when people you read Beatles, people's body language when you're interrogating them. And now you're you, you say investigator. You're a retired police officer. That's right, sir. I am. All right, and uh, okay, go ahead. So anyway, uh, when I was investigating, I went through a couple of schools. They had kinesic interviewing one and two, which is one of the things we did as investigators, and it was to help us read body language when we were interviewing suspects. And I'm telling you. Every signal that I got from Kamala Harris yesterday or last night was that somebody had coached her prior to that discussion with President Trump. President Trump is totally unscripted, and when you see him, that's the original from what you get. Kamala Harris is just entirely too calm and almost rehearsed when she made her comments. And that, I mean, it's just, I watched this over and over and over again. If you're not telling the truth, you're always deceptive in something, or you'll try to sw- bait and switch or something else, and it just it comes across as, as unoriginal. And you, it was all over the place on TV, in particular with the news media. They're so corrupt, it's ridiculous. I just don't understand how people can stand it. Well, um, I'm very interested in what you're talking about here in this uh, Kanishi interviewing technique, which... Uh, Kanishi. I- Kinesic. Uh, I which I, I I take it you picked up as a uh, police officer investigating. You're talking to a murderer and you look for certain uh, body language cues that, that suggest that the person is attempting to mislead you, to deceive you, uh, that they may be rehearsed in uh, in their efforts to to change the subject and to lead you down uh, the garden path. Right. You got it, brother. That's exactly what it is. It's uh, just called lying. <laughs> it's just called lying. Uh, but uh, but it's the uh, scientific version, the, poli- it, the police it's, science it's t- of detecting uh, uh, liars. That's right. The people that teach it are psychologists. And uh, last night you were watching and you, and you saw the body language cues and tips that would lead you to believe as a career police officer that she was not being truthful. That's correct, and she was also coached. And well, she was definitely coached. You know, they bragged about her being coached and spending weeks holed up. And uh, what was the language they used? She, she, yeah, hunkered down. She was hunkered down for well, weeks with teams of Democrats who were coaching her. So she was definitely coached up the yin-yang. She's never come off as uh, smoothly in the past as she came off last night. Am I right? That's correct. And you'll notice in the way she normally talks and the way she was talking last night, she was rehearsed by somebody, and I'm talking about somebody within the news media that leaked her the questions. That's exactly what happened. Well, uh, that is quite an indictment. What an outrageous indictment. Uh, That has never happened before uh, in political history, except when Donna Brazil was at CNN and she leaked all of the questions to the Hillary Clinton camp uh, in the uh, the big debate in 2016. So we have seen it before, haven't we, Bob? That's, that's the playbook, brother. It is that's the playbook. The playbook. Yeah, and uh, longtime Democrat Party political operative and I believe one-time DNC chair, uh, Donna Brazil, she was an employee of CNN. CNN was hosting the debate. Uh, CNN was putting together all the questions for the debate. Donna Brazil got a hold of the questions for the debate and fed them to the Hillary Clinton campaign. So they had all of the questions and everything CNN was going to do ahead of time, which is a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down uh, form of cheating. And Bob, you say watching her last night, you believe, and look, she doesn't even need the questions in advance because, you know, David Muir and Lindsey Davis were there to, to prop her up and to tear Absolutely. President Trump down. Absolutely. I mean, you could see that the thing was 90 percent against Trump yep. from the start. Yeah, I 90 percent is generous. Yeah, yeah. that's generous. I'm, I just think the whole thing was just made up. I really honestly I don't see there's any credibility with the news people involved in that. There's just absolutely none. And I bet you if you gave them a polygraph, they could not pass it. Yeah, I uh, I think you're right, Bob. I don't think there's any doubt that you're right. And I'm really happy that you called in and uh, and shared. I've got to say that I was not before now uh, familiar with the uh, kinesics 
the study of body language and nonverbal communication used in interviews to assess a person's truthfulness. And uh, you know all about it. And you saw it last night. You didn't have to uh, open a book. You just said, there it is. Talk to anybody that's taken the course. They'll tell you the exact same thing. Mm-mm-mm. It's it's so obvious because people don't hide. They they don't hide deceptive things when they do them very well. If their body system is automatically going to react to it, you'll see some a flinch, a flicker, an eye contact or something like that. You'll have eye contact. They'll lose eye contact or switch around and the, the body or move around and, and not be comfortable. It's 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 something that you just you train to look at it and you can see it. Shifty and twitchy. You got it, brother. Yeah, man. Either that or she was on some kind of narcotics. <laughs> Either that. <laughs> that would be another, the, uh, uh, the other indicator would maybe she's on some kind of narcotics. Which, which All you have to do is take a, what is it, uh, the pill that uh, you take when you want to, uh, some kind of a, a sedative that would calm her down or something like that. But she was not the original Kamala Hallis that, that you see on the TV. Very good. Very good. Bob, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate that. I, I learned something on this uh, kinesic, kinesic, K-I-N-E-S-I-C, kinesic interview techniques and uh, kinesic method, uh, reading an individual's body language and movements, facial expressions, physiognomy uh, to determine if he or she is being truthful. Uh, very interesting. Very good stuff. I like it. That's great. And uh, I try to know a lot of stuff I didn't know about that, though. I haven't taken that course. That's great, Bob. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to uh, audio from last night's big debate, which ABC News aired, but you might have watched it on Newsmax instead because Newsmax is a better place to, better place to watch it. President Trump last night, uh, this is pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Yesterday I played a bunch of audio for you. Um, having to do with the Haitian immigrants sent to Springfield, Ohio, by the tens of thousands by the Biden-Harris administration and by the Democrat Party because they're fundamentally transforming the United States of America. They're going to take leave it to Beaverland and turn it into Mogadishu. That's their fundamental transformation. They didn't say it was going to be a positive transformation, that the transformation would lead to good things. They just said they were going to fundamentally transform the United States of America. And uh, again, was the uh, 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 ABC News operation in bed with the Kamala Harris campaign? Uh, It would be entirely unsurprising. And again, Donna Brazil, 2016, CNN employee, former uh, 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 Democrat Party campaign bigwig and DNC chair, leaking uh, everything that the Clinton campaign needed. And the Clinton campaign, filthy, corrupt as they are, they, they took the questions and said, oh, this is very helpful. This way we can cheat more effectively. Hillary Clinton and her entire campaign said, we're cheaters. And there was no moral dilemma. There was no, no wrestling with the ethics uh, involved in that. They took everything that Donna Brazil gave them and they used and abused the crooked information from their spy inside CNN. CNN um, uh, let her go. You know, it's not like she was fired with extreme prejudice, and then the Democrat Party made sure she got millions of dollars out of it. She, uh, I think she still has this enormous, beautiful, historic house down on Capitol Hill, not too far from the Capitol on East Capitol Street. She, uh, she lives very well. Because the Democrats, the left, they look out for each other. All right, let's go to audio. Let's go to uh, President Trump last night when the uh, the news media, President Trump talked about, again, we played a bunch of audio yesterday out of Springfield, Ohio, where residents uh, talked about how they've witnessed Haitian migrants who, again, uh, uh, Springfield, a, a, a city of 60,000 people, until the Democrats decided to put Fifteen to 20,000 Haitians in there because they'd fit in so well in Springfield, Ohio. And the Democrats are trying to turn the state, you know, and, the, and they, uh, they're they extremely corrupt people, the Democrat Party. So this moment at the uh, big debate last night, talking about the Haitians in Springfield, President Trump talking about the Haitians in Springfield, Ohio. In Springfield, 
They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating they're eating the pets of the cackling. people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. As far as rallies are concerned, as far as the reason they go is they like what I say. They want to bring our country back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase. Make America great again. She's destroying this country. And if she becomes president, this country doesn't have a chance of success. Not only success, we'll end up being Venezuela on steroids. On steroids. Everything's always on steroids. Uh, the New York Post had the story yesterday, Springfield, Ohio's Haitian migrant crisis and missing ducks. Prove Harris and Biden erased our border. Now, President Trump said that. I played the audio from the city council meeting in uh, Springfield, Ohio, uh, from a news report from people that live there talking about the stuff. they. And then at a, another town outside of Springfield, like an hour away, uh, somebody was was a f- a fun and a- a- an African American woman and a woman of African origin eating somebody's cat when the cat owners came along. I played that for you. But now David Muir of uh, ABC Fake News was not going to sit still for what President Trump just said there. I just want to clarify here. You bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio, and, and ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there manager. have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets credible, being harmed, specific. injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Well, All I've this, seen people on television. Let me just say here, this is the, the people on television clear- say my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he said that, and maybe that's a good yeah. thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from but television. But the people on I'm television, television the saying manager. their dog was eaten uh, by the people that went there. Again, the Springfield city manager says there's no evidence of that. Vice President we'll Harris, out. I'll let you respond to the rest of what you've heard. Now, we uh, again, we played audio soundbite after audio soundbite of residents of Springfield, Ohio, yesterday, uh, and they, uh, they beg to differ. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them and, and eating them. Eating them. And uh, they, now uh, there's a photograph of a guy of African origin, I can't say what country he's from, walking along with a dead goose, uh, holding him upside down in the uh, in Springfield. But the news media is all over this story, saying it's fake, it's fake. CBS News, 46 minutes ago. Trump, comma, J.D. Vance, repeat baseless claim. Haitian immigrants are eating pets. I guess maybe it's okay if they're just ducks and geese in the park. As Ohio officials say there is no evidence, no evidence, because I played a whole bunch of audio for you yesterday, shared with you story after story about what's going on in Springfield, Ohio. And not uh, saying they're cannibals like barbecue, the gang leader in Haiti. Democrats love Haiti. It's kind of strange that they love Haiti. By the way, the Ohio Attorney General has launched an investigation into the Haitian migrant reports the disaster in Springfield amid wild claims of eating pets and reckless driving. I played that one too in overturning cars and driving crazy all over the place. I played that audio for you yesterday. Grabbing ducks, it's uh, eat and go. It's the eat and go duck and goose pond in Springfield, Ohio. But the media wants to tell you that that's not true. Doesn't matter what the residents there say, because the media believes it might be bad for the Democrat Party. Ah, the Democrat Party attacked a police station in Washington, D.C. last night because a guy in a car crashed his car into a McDonald's in southeast D.C. and passed out. And when the police got there, he was passed out with a gun in his lap. And when they tried to get his attention, he grabbed his gun and the guy got shot by the police. And he's the hero of the story. So they looted the Saks Fifth Avenue among uh, five or six other locations. Uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, about uh, two blocks from this radio station. Because, you know, that's revenge. The guy, the police are bad and looting makes everything better. Uh, Elect Democrats for more carjacking, more looting, more shootings. Your Democrat Party. Oh, let's grab a phone call. Let's go to Sean calling from Stafford, Virginia. Sean, you're on the Chris Plant Show. 
Hey, Chris, always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I've got three quick takeaways from the debate tonight and one area where I think Trump shined. Uh, first takeaway, uh, Muir was horrible. That, that cannot be denied. Uh, whether he gave the uh, questions in advance really doesn't matter. Trump did not prepare, and it's blatantly obvious. He was led down rabbit holes. He took the bait. Rather than call the media out, he just he, he fell for it. But that leads me to my second takeaway. Kamala is exceedingly unlikable, even more so than Hillary. Uh, she was condescending. She appeared more white than Trump. I don't know how that's possible. And she was just basically an ultra Karen. I think that will turn some people off. So point number three, third takeaway, I don't think the needle moves at all. I think people know who they're voting for. This is probably going to do very little in the long run to affect things. Now, the one area where I think Trump shined, it was a beautiful response to the abortion uh, question. I, I think he did a magnificent job of talking about state rights. I just wish he would have brought it home and correlated it to how our constitutional republic was formed. But that was a very good answer overall. Very good. You should uh, have a job with uh, ABC News, but uh, but they're just an arm of the Democrat <laughs> Party. Um, you, you think that Kamala's uh, uh, Karen, who's less likable than Hillary. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe, but she, she just, her, her facial mannerisms and everything about her, I, I think ultimately it's going to turn some people off that are undecided. I, I think, you know, voters are going to split both ways on it. Trump might lose some. Kamala's going to lose some. She just came off as very un, unauthentic, and gosh, I, I just, I, I couldn't stand watching her. I just couldn't. Very, uh, very good. Thank you, Sean. I, I like it. And and we're going to get to President Trump on the abortion exchange because that was, that was a key part of the corruption of last night's events. 